In the previous video, we had investigated the coordinate system for a B basis and for a C basis, and we'd seen how a vector x can be written in terms of both of these two different bases. What we want to do now in this video is answer this question algebraically opposed to geometrically. In, in particular, we want to know if I have a vector written as a linear combination in that B basis, how do I figure out what that vector is in the C basis? That is what we're going to answer in this video. All right, so let me start with the vector x. And I'm going to write it as a linear combination of the different basis vectors, the b1 and the b2. And because they're a basis and they span all of R2, every vector can be written this way. Perhaps I'll give the coefficients the names a1 and a2. However, what we note here is that a linear combination is just the same thing as a matrix vector product. And so this linear combination by definition of a matrix vector product is the multiplication of that matrix that has the columns, the basis vectors, and then this particular matrix is going to multiply the coefficients a1 and a2. However, I don't typically use an a1 or an a2. I use a slightly different notation for what's being multiplied on the right-hand side. The vector I typically write here is going to be the vector x, and then I put a script b beneath it to denote that this is the vector x that is written in the b basis. Now, I've just done this particular computation, but I could have done exactly the same thing for a different basis, the C basis. So this is additionally can be written as the matrix whose columns are the C1 and the C2 times the vector X in the script C basis. And if I had more, if I had a D and an E, I could continually line all of these particular vectors up. Note, by the way, that when I don't put any sort of coefficient down at the bottom, any sort of subscript, that I'm just referring to it being written in the standard basis. So the real question that we have is, if I know one of these, say x written in the B basis, how do I figure out what x written in the C basis is going to be? Now, this is going to be a bit of a task, but what I'm going to first try to do is write the vectors b1 and b2 in the C basis. So one thing I could do is I could say, all right, let's do precisely what we just did above. That is, instead of taking a vector x and trying to write it in the C basis, I'm going to take the specific vector b1 and write it in the C basis. So I can write the b1 as uh, this vector c1, c2, multiplied by the b1 vector in that C basis. Or if I wished, I could rearrange things and write in the following way. I could say that the B1 vector in the C basis, I'm going to invert that matrix, and I can therefore write it as C1, C2 inverse, all multiplied to the vector B1. So I have this pleasing relationship between a particular vector b1 and how I write it in the C basis. By the way, you might wonder, one second, do you know that it's invertible? Indeed I do. I know that the C vectors are linearly independent. And so one of the conditions of that is that if I put into a matrix, that that matrix has a leading one in every row and column. Indeed, it's going to be a square matrix. And that is precisely equivalent to the condition of it being invertible. So I'm not violating any rules when I do this. However, I could also say exactly the same thing for B2. So I can come here and I'm not going to do the computation out. I'm just going to note that B2 in that C basis is also going to be C1, C2, the inverse of that, B2. So these particular equations aren't really doing anything new. I already knew how I could take a vector and write it in the C basis. I've just chosen to do that process for the specific vectors, the basis of B. All right, so now let's go back up and look at the core formula that we were looking at before. This was a relationship between a vector written in the B basis 
and a vector written in the C basis. And indeed, that any generic vector x, you could write it in these multiple ways, so these two different ways are going to be equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this all the way down here, and what I thus get is the following. I'm going to try to identify the xc from my red box. So I'm going to say that my vector x written in the C basis is, well, I've got a matrix out the front of it, so I'm going to invert the matrix and move it to the other side. So it's going to be the C1, C2 inverse, and then I'm going to be multiplying by the B1, the B2, and finally the vector x written in the B basis. So basically I'm just taking the, the equation that I have over here, I'm inverting the matrix who's got C's as their columns, and that leaves me with this nice expression. All right. Final step. I want to look at the product of these two matrices there. I'm taking this inverse and I'm multiplying it to the B1, B2. But we remember how matrix multiplication was defined. Matrix multiplication was defined by saying you could do it sort of column by column. Which is to say that I could first look at this particular matrix just multiplied to the first column and that's going to be my first column on the output. And then I could look at the first matrix multiplied to the second column, and that was going to give me my second column of the output of my matrix multiplication. So indeed, matrix multiplication can be done column by column. And the reason why I say this is that if I just look at the first matrix times the first column, which is going to be the first column of my output, well, that's precisely what I just saw up here. In other words, this is going to be the matrix whose first column is going to be the B1, but the B1 written in the C basis. And then likewise, whose second column is going to be that B2, but written in the C basis. And then I'm going to finally come out and put my X written in the B basis.